Hey Fly Tires, welcome back to another Fly Tying Tutorial. Darren here. Today we're going to be tying a pattern called Fox's Caddis Pupa. And this is a pretty simple pattern, but it's uh, one that I've started using just at the end of last year. There's a number of different variations you can tie this in. Um, primarily, this one that I'm tying is, is more of a, a spring coloration with the green body but the, you can also tie some of these f with uh, either a tan chenille or vanille uh, chartreuse or even some of the orange or brown into the fall to start replicating like october caddis type insects so the originator of this fly is tim fox and he originated this sometime in the 1990s for fishing the lower sacramento river saying that it's uh, still a pretty effective fly for most rivers where you've got a healthy population of caddis flies. Don't forget to comment on the video to get entered into the next draw for flies. All right, let's have a look at the material list and get started. Let's get a fresh hook in the vise. First we're going to just slip a bead onto this hook and I'm going to be using a tungsten bead. This is a 3.3 millimeter gold tungsten bead and we're putting this onto a barbless fire hole 315 and just slide that on there. We'll take our Finish fly out of the vise and put our fresh hook in there. S super sharp, just stuck myself with that. All right, looks good. And this is a size 12 fire hole 315. So let's get on some thread. We're going to be using some ADOT 70D black thread and we'll just tie that on right behind the bead just with a couple wraps to secure it. Next we're going to take some flat mylar tinsel. In this case we're going to be using a black holographic uni. Some of the other colors I like to use are the peacock uni or the uh, holographic chartreuse is another nice one. And we'll just take a few wraps again just tie that on right behind the bead and then we're going to take a piece of wire for a ribbing. I'm going to be using olive for this one. It's got a nice contrast between the olive and the black body there. So I'm going to take a small length, about 8 inches or so. And again, we're just going to tie that in behind the bead. I'm just going to fold that back just to make sure it's locked in there. And then we're going to take the wire and the mylar we're just going to pull those together and we're going to start winding those down the hook shank as one piece this will help keep our body fairly slim and we'll put that wire out of the way and we'll take our thread back up in behind the bead then we're just going to use uh, touching or overlapping wraps of this black holographic tinsel and we'll wind that back up just behind the bead here and we're going to leave a little bit of space for a thorax there we'll tie that off with a few wraps and trim off the excess next we're going to take our body material and we're going to be using the worm green Ultra chenille, and this is standard size for the number 12. And I don't usually cut this off of the card. You can just tie it in right behind the bead. We just want to make sure it's secured there. And I'm just going to measure that out, maybe about two times the length of the shank or so. And we'll trim that off and put the rest aside. So now we just basically want to 
trap down that chenille on the top of the hook shank with our wire. And we'll do that a few times as we wrap it up. You just want to make sure that you adjust the chenille so that it stays on top of the hook shank. It can roll just with the uh, side pressure of the wire as you wrap it up. So we'll tie that off, off the wire really securely. Just pull it tight, add a few more wraps, and we'll take the back of our scissors there, that little wire cutter, and we'll trim off or uh, hide the rest and just kind of throw a couple loops over that. All right, so next we're going to just add a little bit of a taper to this chenille, and you will want to make sure you have a responsible adult handy so that they can do this for you. If you're not responsible, find one. And that just basically just kiss the flame to the chenille and that kind of provides a nice little taper with a little bit of color right at the end there. Next, we're gonna take a little bit of UV resin. We're just gonna be using the bone dry in this case. If you don't have a UV resin, you can use something uh, like a Sally Hansen's. Just be careful when you're putting it on. You don't put it on too thick. Or if you don't have the brush on, just use a thin UV. But basically, this is just going to help secure the uh, uh, mylar tinsel and the wraps of thread. So next, we're going to put a throat on this fly. You can use a number of different things, uh, like Hungarian partridge is, I think, was listed in the original pattern for this. Uh, we're going to be using a little bit of mallard dyed wood duck in this case. And I just like to take the tip of that feather and bend every, pull everything else back out of the way. And I can use the rest of that feather for another application. Just add a couple loose wraps. Kind of pull that to shorten it a little bit and then we'll lock that down when we've got it where we want it and we'll pull those out just to adjust the look of them here just so that they're not up tight against the body we'll trim away the excess feather there all right we can flip that fly over now and we can add some antennae to the fly. And for this, I'm just going to use some waterfowl. So you can use uh, any feather like from a mallard or gadwell or teal, something with a little bit of barring. The mallard's not my first choice. I would rather go something with like a teal where it's got some stronger barring on the uh, feather fibers. We're just going to take one strand, tie it on the right side, and then we'll take another and we'll tie that on the left side. You kind of want them to splay apart. It doesn't make too much of a difference. They, Once they get wet, they're going to collapse together anyhow, but this is uh, maybe one of those things just for the fly angler uh, well-being here. So you want to wrap those down, and if they're not exactly how you want to make sure before it's uh, locked in place, go ahead and change that. These are a little skewed for my liking, so I'll unwrap some of this thread and just reposition those to a spot where I like them. So I also wanted to mention there was a variation of this I've been fishing so far this year, and it just omits the throat and the antennae and it works fairly well. So if you want a bit of a shortcut, just skip those last two and uh, skip right to the ostrich hurl thorax. So I'm going to take two of my smaller pieces of ostrich here and this is a good use for uh, some of the ostrich I have. I tend to use quite a few of the longer plumes for some of my steelhead and spay flies. So I'm left over. I've got a lot of these smaller pieces, so this is a perfect application for that. 
or for different types of leeches, that sort of thing. So we just tied in those two pieces together at the back and then we'll wind those forward just to fill the gap between the back of the body and the bead. And just make sure you go back and forth. Trim off the excess there. Now we'll grab our whip finish tool and we're just going to add a couple whip finishes to this fly. And this one's ready for your box and ready to go out and catch some trout with the fox's caddis pupa. All right, guys, good luck on the water. Hey, fly tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel, and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips, and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.